Good afternoon. This is another Tuesday that I'm kind of jam-packed, um, and I'll be doing the lesson for tonight early. The te lesson for tonight is called The Exact Truth. Uh, there's the picture of Luke uh, documenting everything. I want you to remember where we've been. We marked the places in our Bible last week, those four sections of Scripture I went through in detail with you. And we highlighted that in Christ all things hold together, that Christ is the, the cement for all of this. And we also highlighted the Pharisees, thinking they've never been enslaved to anyone, but they don't understand the enslavement of sin. So then we come here to page 32, our lesson for this week. You can know the exact truth and the... Luke 1, uh, 4, and the question becomes this. This study is supposed to be on the book of Abraham, or on Abraham. And um, it seems like we have veered off of that, but I'll suggest to you by the time we finish this lesson, you'll see we actually haven't. The picture on this page, that picture I just showed you with uh, St. Luke documenting the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, as he assisted by other researchers. And why this intense research and documentation, the question is that. Why is Luke so intense and careful in his investigation uh, and documentation of the gospel facts? Uh, Luke and his research assistants were intense uh, for this reason. And this is from Luke chapter 1, 1 through 4 so that you might know the exact truth about things you have been taught. So in Luke's day, and also today, followers of Christ placed their lives and eternal destiny in Christ who lived and died and rose again from the dead. The Christian desire a solid foundation of faith built upon the historic Jesus. So what we're looking at here specifically, and specifically to Luke, is historic references and we see that those historic references are also recognized as very credible from Luke by by many historians let's look at the the next chapter there or the next paragraph there the Holy Spirit's historical documentation is recorded by Saint Luke uh, includes specific historical facts verifiable today for instance Saint Luke writes now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census would be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first sentence, census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, Luke 2, 1 through 2. Even secular historians take, have been greatly impressed how clearly and correctly uh, St. Luke's gospel is anchored in history. He, he's re, his record, record of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is even recognized as accurate by the secular people. Now, this section here is going to seem quite laborious, but it's for a reason. Open your Bible and with your little loved ones, and there that emphasis is again to share the Word of God with our kids and grandkids and great-grandkids. Uh, and your entire family, read to them this additional doc documentation of Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. Now, this is where the long list begins. Shortly before his arrest, um, Christ went into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, Luke 22, 39 through 41, historical fact. As Christ was praying, an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him, Luke 22, 43, historical fact. Uh, then the chief pri uh, priest, officers of the temple, and elders arrived in the garden. Judas betrayed his master to the chief priest by kissing Christ, Luke twenty two forty seven historical fact. After Christ was arrested, he was led away to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a, a distance, Luke twenty two fifty four historical fact. Peter denied Christ three times, Luke twenty two fifty one through 61, historical fact. Christ was uh, forced to appear before Herod, Luke 23, 1 through 12, historical fact. Pontius Pilate spoke with Christ, examined him, and then condemned Christ to death, Luke 23, 13 through 24. Simon of Cyrene carried Christ's cross, Luke 23, 26, a more historical facts. 
Christ was crucified in a place called the Skull, Luke 23, 33. Roman soldiers gambled for Christ's garment. One of the two criminals crucified with Christ mocked and made fun of Christ, Luke 23, 35 through 39. Christ said to the repentant criminal, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Historical fact from Luke 23, 43. From 12 noon until 3 in the afternoon, darkness covered the whole land. The veil in the Jerusalem temple was torn in two, Luke 23, 44 through 45. Historical fact, Christ died, Luke 23, 46. Historical fact. Now, there's that long list that I told you was going to be there. and seems somewhat laborious. But here's the whole point that he makes here. The above facts of history, specifically itemized by the Holy Spirit through St. Luke, totally and forever separates the Christian faith from all human philosophies and cultic religions that existed in Christ's day and exist today also amongst us. Those facts make the difference. And it separates the Christian faith from all other philosophies and religions, etc., to get the full impact, read also St. Matthew, um, we're told here. To better understand why the Holy Spirit, through St. Luke, insisted on historical documentation, read the following account in St. Matthew. Now, while the women were on their way, some of the Roman guards came to the city and reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when the chief priest had assembled with the other elders of the Jews and consulted together, they made this decision. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers. Then they told the soldiers, You are to say uh, his disciples came by night and stole Jesus' body while we were asleep. Then these Jewish leaders added in this in their instructions to the Roman guard. And if they should come to the governor's ears, we win him over and keep you out of trouble. The Holy Spirit then um, provides the historical documentation. The Roman soldiers took the money from the Jewish leaders. They did as they had been instructed. This fake story was widely spread among the Jews, and to this day, Matthew 28, 1 through 15. Some today still try to say that Christ's death and resurrection are not facts of history. So, here it comes to what I was mentioning earlier as we've gone through a few lessons here. It doesn't seem like there's any connection to Abraham here. Why mentions Luke's intense focus on historic accuracy? We also seen some from Matthew there. This question, this issue of good news, number 46, focuses primarily on Abraham. Why include a major New Testament figure in the Bible stories featuring Old Testament Abraham? And we're talking about Luke here. Answer, in this highly researched and heavily documented history of the life of Christ, St. Luke, the historian, refers to Old Testament Abraham no less than 14 times. Therefore, since the Holy Spirit moved St. Luke to carry out such intense research on the death and resurrection of Christ, you have this blessed assurance that St. Luke was not writing in a piecemeal disconnected history. Rather, the Bible stories in St. Luke's Gospel are anchored in Old Testament history, especially, and this is where the connection is finally made, in Abraham. When you speak about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, everything is interrelated. Christ is therefore all things, and in Christ all things hold together, Colossians 1.17. St. Luke also researched and authored the book of Acts, which includes an additional seven, seven references to Abraham. As you read the next six pages, know this for certain. The history you have read is the result of solid research and documentation by men as led by the Holy Spirit. No prophecy came by the will of man. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, 2 Peter 1.21. So, we see the connection here with Abraham. We see the connection with the Old Testament. And what do we see in that connection? There is prophecy and there is fulfillment. Now, we're getting close to being done with with this lesson here, uh, or this book here. And so we are going to be picking up a study on prophecy after this. Um, we talked about amongst the elders and leaders of the congregation about starting Sunday school and Bible study on Sunday morning. Um, many of the, 
the families and, and the teachers are not ready for that. So we will do this again um, in the same way using the Good News Magazine on Prophecy. And uh, we'll get started with that as soon as we finish this one. Let's bow our heads and pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, as we read the historical documentation of the Holy Spirit through St. Luke, we rejoice that all things in heaven and on earth are held together by you. We pray this in your blessed name. Amen. Well, thank you for this week. Uh, sorry to have to do this early two weeks, but I have a number of uh, things to do. Um, you all have a good day.